scary to read in front of people. So we're um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Acts chapter two. Um, I'm gonna preach this week and next week, so we're definitely gonna talk about Acts chapter two for the next two weeks. I love the new uh, the New Testament church. And so for those of you who have been involved in any way in house church or the house church movement, um, you know my love for this because in Acts chapter 2, they literally describe that church, that church that began after Jesus died and was resurrected, that church that began after Pentecost, that powerful, powerful church. And so I thought, you know what, what is, what's like a great way to to kind of explain these crazy people. They were kind of crazy. Let's say they were kind of crazy. What's a great word to talk about these people in this Acts chapter 2 church? Back then, they were, well, they were groundbreaking, absolutely. They were kind of revolutionary a little bit or a lot of bit. But they were all sorts of of amazing things. But you know what I really thought when I thought, what are these people? Devoted. Devoted. So can you guys say devoted? Devoted. Yeah. I really feel like that is, that's a word that kind of like encapsulates all that they were. They were sold out to Jesus in a time when it wasn't, I won't say it wasn't just cool, it was dangerous to be in these early churches. And so devoted is kind of, uh, well, that's basically what I want to talk about. Devotion. Devotion. And, And what does devotion mean? You probably want to know what devotion means. It means to consistently show strength, which prevails in spite of differences, to endure, to persist, to stay in a fixed direction, steadfast and loyal. The early church, that was, that was them. In fact, let's look at Acts uh, 2.42 before we... I'm going to pray again. We just can't have enough prayer. Acts 2.42, they devoted... Okay, you guys can see that's actually where I got the word, but, but I wanted you to think I, I was just so brilliant. I wasn't. I just read it in here. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Do you you guys see four things in there? Yes. Teaching, the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. They were devoted. And so we're just going to talk a little bit about that tonight because it's right here, and it's so easy. Um, It's um, Justin was talking about Tozer. This guy has a brain bigger than most. These books of his are very hard to grasp and do take a long time to read. And heaven forbid you ever have to write a paper on these things. But you know what? The scripture, as as we unpack it together today, it's easy to understand. It's easy to see what they were devoted to. So let's go ahead and pray real quick. Father God, we just, we ask you, Lord, that you would just fall afresh on this place. Lord, we too want to be devoted and maybe not to what we're currently devoted to. Lord, we want to be devoted to you. Lord, use your scripture this, this evening, Lord, to change our hearts and our minds. Lord, to help us rearrange our priorities. Lord, help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you've already, um, you've already kind of seen what it is that I'm going to, where I'm going. You've already seen my outline right here because these four things that the, that the early church was doing um, are right here in this verse, teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. So I want to talk about each of those things, but tonight I just want to talk about teaching. I just want to talk about teaching. I, I like teaching. I like teaching the Bible. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten on our, our midweek Bible studies online or if you've ever been even, you can come to the church, you can do them here. Teaching and teachers help us, they help us understand things, right? They lead to maturity 
maybe unity, and fullness of faith. And so our goal as teachers, or who, or maybe you are teachers as well, is that you want to bring, I want to bring people to the fullness of Christ. Does anybody enjoy learning? Some people do. Some people like to read. Some people, there we go. Thank you. Big hands in the back. There we go. You know what a reward of good teaching is? Learning. Learning. That's right. And learning the scriptures together with other believers was something that the early church was devoted to. Can you guys say devoted? Devoted. devoted. They were devoted to this. But learning takes time. And sometimes learning can be difficult. Learning requires effort, engagement, and attention. And for those of you who, you know, took high school algebra and were always struggling to stay awake, or maybe it was English for you that was really hard. I don't, for me, it was probably more English than, than math because I love the math stuff. But wow, you're sitting there and you're like, okay, I've I've got to tune in. This is going to be on the test. This is important. I can't miss this part. I'm falling asleep while taking my notes. Like, all right, learning is not always easy. It's not always easy. The reward, though, is learning, is having that deeper understanding and that knowledge. I don't know how much calculus I use. I must say that. I, I, don't, I don't use all of that, all of the stuff that I worked so hard to figure out in my senior year. I don't remember, I don't remember much of it. And as I help my kids with their math today, I'm like, wow, I'm pretty sure I took this. Pretty sure I don't know what I'm doing. But there were lots of things that I do remember. And so thankfully, I do know some things. Thankfully, I can write a letter or balance a checkbook. But what really lasts is the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ, right? We've got to learn about that now, but you know, the Bible is actually going to be in heaven. Like, we've got a long time to study this book, like eternity, people, eternity. So if you want to take some classes, you want to learn more about the Bible, this sort of learning will be useful for all eternity. Calculus Maybe not so much. But Bible learning, that's going to be useful on and on and on and on and on and on. Let's go. Um, Hannah, will you pull up Matthew 28, 18 to 20? You guys know that we have, though, Bible studies. And even if you don't do the whole online Bible study thing, Tuesdays at 7, Wednesdays at 7, Thursdays at 7, um, we have house churches, right? We've got Monday night for teens. We've got Thursday night for adults. We've got lots of times where you can dig into the word. And these, these classes, these times together are a really great opportunity to dig in together. I don't, I don't know if, if sometimes when people are a little bit more introverted, maybe they do love to dig into the Bible and they love to study it and they love to do all this stuff. But I like to do it with others. It helps me. It keeps me on track. And so I jump in with other people and I say, let's look in the Bible. Let's read it together. I don't have all the answers. Maybe they know something. And I just get a lot more done. And then we keep it to an hour. And then, you know, then you got to go home. So I like that, learning with other people. I don't know if you guys do or not, but you've got this opportunity. You can go home and you can study the Bible for 10 hours straight all by yourself. I'm so glad for you, and I'm glad you have that, that discipline. But if you're more like me, um, then come and let's do this together. And it's not a bad thing. So... Right here at this, at this point, I just want to um, just point out that Jesus said very plainly in the Great Commission, he said this in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. It said, um, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them 
to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So we are to teach, right, what Christ taught, the fullness of his training. That's our goal at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we need to make disciples and equip them so they too can have the fullness of the gospel. So, Hannah, next we're going to do the 2 Timothy 2, 2. Um, and Paul says this, Paul, Pastor Paul, I'm sorry, Apostle Paul says this really well. To Timothy, to Timothy, he said, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others, right? If we don't pass our faith along, through reliable and sound teaching. It's only going to be a few generations, and then this knowledge will end. I don't, do you guys teach your kids things? Do you teach children things ever? Like, you need to teach them how to brush their teeth, right? If you do not teach them to brush their teeth or help them brush their teeth, you will take them to the dentist someday, and there will be no teeth, right? So we have to teach our kids. We have to teach the next generation. And I don't think it's, it's weird to, to even imagine in these days that the gospel disappearing from, the, from, from our community because it surely seems missing. There's a lot of just stuff that I always have known about. And now the kids of this generation, younger and younger, they don't know this stuff. I remember meeting a child one day, and I said something about Adam and Eve, and this child had no idea who Adam and Eve were, none. And I just took it for granted. I said, well, doesn't everybody know who Adam and Eve are? But if we don't teach the children, they will not know who Adam and Eve are. They will not know what the Bible is. And so... Our goal, right, our goal is to, is to share it, is to pass it along. The good news is that you do not have to be a missionary. You do not have to be a deacon. You do not have to be a pastor. You just have to be willing. You just have to be willing. Do you have a pulse? You are qualified. Fantastic. Even if you don't speak, you can write it down. Even if you can't hear, you can use sign language. You are, you are qualified. If you are willing, you are qualified. I will say that because scripture is, is the thing that we need to be sharing with other people. So in 2 Timothy 3.16, it tells us about the power of scripture. Because I know what you're thinking, you're like, well, I haven't been to seminary, so how am I going to tell people about this? But in 2 Timothy 3.16, hold on, it's coming. It says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So I know that you're wise. I know that you're a great communicator. I know that you are so smart and you are able to convey knowledge. I know that. But you know what? The scripture is all you really need to say. Because the scripture actually has all the power. It is God-breathed. Nothing that I have ever said has ever been fabulous. I will say that. Unless I, it is, unless I am saying the scriptures, that's where the power comes. When I preach, the power comes from the scriptures that I share with you. The power comes from me trying to convey to you the importance of knowing the scriptures that are from God. They are God-breathed. It's, it's amazing to me that, that he has actually entrusted this to me, but I hope you feel also amazed that he's entrusted it to you because he said, I want to pick each and every one of you to go and tell other people about Jesus Christ. Could he have done this on his own? Absolutely. He's God. He can do whatever he wants, but he entrusted it to me. 
He gave me the gospel and said, go, Tina, go, go, go. He went to each of you and said, here's the gospel, go. Go tell others, just as we were saying before about the Great Commission. The Great Commission is to go, and you're willing. If you're willing, then he can use you. He will use you. <laughs> it's funny that, uh, that every word of the Bible is so very powerful. And so, you know, I, I don't know, maybe you guys should turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, who are you? Yeah, that's good, Chris. Yeah, that wall is going to answer you. Turn to your neighbor and ask, who are you going to share about Jesus with this week? Now, that's, um, who are you going to share the gospel with this week? How's that? Go ahead. Ask your neighbors. Ask your neighbors. Who are you going to share? Has God given you a sphere of influence? Has he given you people that you know, right? Where do you work? Where do you hang out? Where do you drink coffee? <laughs> Who can you share Christ with this week? Try not to stress out about having all the answers. Because I hate to tell you, I do not have all of the answers. But if you step in faith... And you say, I've got a couple scriptures for you. You are literally carrying the Holy Spirit and dumping out this incredible power on another person. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? Can he do that through you? Absolutely. Absolutely. If he can do it through me, he can do it through you. But it requires us to be willing. It requires us to be Devoted. Devoted. So let's, let's just trust, trust that are those beautiful words um, that he has given us. So finally, um, we were just talking. I'll tell you, I just didn't even mention my two points. Sorry, my slides got eaten by uh, the, the, uh, the water that I spilled on my laptop this afternoon. I guess they do, those, two, those two things do not go together. So I've already talked about the goal of teaching. You didn't know it, but that's what you got. You got the goal of teaching, and the re end result is the Great Commission, that you will go, 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 and say, and be willing, and be devoted. And then the next one we talked about was passing along the teaching, passing it along. It's super great that you have the gospel, but just like the, uh, the Dead Sea, what happens when you don't spill anything out? of what you have received. The Dead Sea is pretty much what? Dead, yes. It has no outlet, right? You've probably heard this from pastors before, but all this water comes in and the Dead Sea is so salty that nothing really grows there. You can float in it. Pastor Paul and I, were, we were floating in it. It's pretty cool because it's so salty, but not good for much else. So you could probably like make beef jerky in there or something, but that's about it. You need a lot of salt. So, all right, that was passing along the teaching. Don't hold it to yourself. Who can you tell about Jesus? And the last one I want to talk about is being fully capable. you fully capable if you aren't sure where to start with your learning. Or if you're not quite sure that you can even teach people about the profound truths of the Bible. In, um, we did already cover 2 Timothy 3.16, and that is that the scripture is so powerful, right? Thank you, Hannah. It's so powerful, and it's useful for all of these things, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So if that is so powerful and you want to learn more about this, about this powerful stuff, then getting into that Bible study, opening up your Bible even on your own, it's finding a devotional maybe and learning even at your own pace. If you want to become better and better and better at sharing your faith and teaching others, you can always start in the Gospels. Do you guys know what the, the Gospels are? There's four of them, and they are Matthew, 
Mark, Luke, and John. Those first four, cha- first four books of the New Testament, right? And it's great because what you can do is you can learn more and more about the stories, learn more and more about, about the Bible, learn more and more about Jesus Christ. But we teach in house church that you can also just share your testimony. Do you need an in? Like you've met somebody and you just want to tell them about Jesus really quick. We have a 15-second testimony, and that's very easy to teach. If you need to know about that, please just uh, go on to our app, I'm going to say, or our website, um, and it's right on there. You can talk about the three circles, which tells people about the basics of the gospel, and, and we learn that from people who teach it with a stick in the dirt in Ethiopia. They do, not, they do not write the same language, but they can speak the same language through interpreters, and there they are with a stick in the dirt explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't be overwhelmed. Be, even have some, have some patience for yourself. Be kind to yourself. Have some grace for yourself. Because it's, it is a process, but you have to be willing. You have to be willing. If you think about some of your favorite teachers, did anybody ever have a favorite teacher in school? I find that usually it's elementary school teachers. I don't know. Was it ele- em- elementary school teachers for you guys? Maybe high school teachers? Middle, Middle school? There you go. It's, you know, it, teachers are so... They're so willing, right, to give of themselves. So I'll just tell you about my favorite teacher. And that's my first grade teacher, and that's Mrs. Lieb, L-I-E-B, Mrs. Lieb. And she's long since gone to heaven. But in um, first grade, when I was uh, six years old, some of you know that I was kidnapped. And it was a very hard time for me. It was a very long couple weeks, and it was somebody, obviously, that I knew um, who took me, and, and it took the, the FBI, to, it took them two weeks to find me. My parents spent everything they had to charter a little plane to get up to, um, to New York, where, is where they found me, in a commune, and, and I was safe, and I didn't know what was going on. I was six. I was safe, and I was kind of happy because there were presents and and play lots of playtime but I wanted my mom and I wanted my dad and after all this came to bear and I was brought home and I had some time um, in foster care and it it was it was tough it was tough and as a six-year-old I have to say I didn't really understand but my first grade teacher she was so sweet and I can still remember her You know, just, she was so kind to me. She was so kind to me. I hope that you have a teacher like that. I hope that you have had one in your life or you have one now. You know, Pastor Paul and I and and Pastor Dan and Pastor Gay, like teaching is in our hearts. We love to teach, and we love to teach about the Bible, and I, I pray that you will always find, find just open arms to learn about the Scripture, even from us, because it's so important that you connect with a teacher. It's so important that you find Jesus Christ, even his hands and his feet, right here on this earth, right? Somebody who can say, let's study the Word together, that you can have that, that, that comfort and that peace in, in working through the scriptures with somebody else even. Man, I just, I love, I love spending the time in the word. I love learning. And I think Mrs. Lee, but that, that was definitely what I got from her. Is that she just, she always told me that it was very important to keep pushing forward. And it was very important to take time and study the things that I really wanted to know about. We need to be devoted. 
We need to be devoted. Jesus Christ was so devoted to you. Like John said, when he put his arms out on that cross and, and when he died, he did that for you. He did that for me. <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing because I, a lot of times, I don't know how you felt in your walk with Jesus Christ, but I have felt discouraged in the past. I felt incapable. I felt ill-equipped. Oh, here comes the tissues. I think I'm done now. I've kind of pulled it all together. Not really. Um, I have felt all those things in the past. And I felt like, well, how, how is it that I'm supposed to be doing this? I'm not prepared to do this. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. And God says, I trust you, Pastor Tina. But even long before that, he just said, I trust you, Tina. Long before I was a pastor. He said, if you're devoted to me, then we can pull this off. My power and your devotion, we can do this. We can spread the gospel all over the world together. And he's never given me, he's never given me time to kind of say, well, maybe there's something else I can do. <laughs> He's like, nope, we're going to keep pushing forward. And the Apostle Paul says in, in Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. What power do you run on? Like, I run on the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is so much more than I have because I run out. I, you, you guys have seen me fall asleep everywhere. I'm a great sleeper. I can fall asleep anywhere, even while I'm eating. I can do that. I run out of power. But the Holy Spirit, he says, oh, let's, let's get back up. Let's keep going. There were people to tell about Jesus. May we be fully devoted <laughs> to the one who is fully capable in each and every situation. And when we're feeling weak, let us remember that his grace is sufficient, right? His grace is sufficient for every circumstance, every situation that life throws our way. So the earliest church was absolutely devoted. They were absolutely devoted to their faith. And as we... We wrap up today, I think, I, think it's, I think it's a fair question when I say, what are you devoted to? What are you devoted to? Because what you are devoted to actually spells out who you are. We lived in Illinois, and we had a neighbor who had a collection of beer cans. Every kind of beer can like from all over the world, they were empty. And, and so, so what was he devoted to? Yeah, he was also a really good beer drinker. Um, he was devoted to this collection that he had that took over most of his garage. He was devoted to beer. And if you knew him, you knew that about him because he was quite proud of it. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about him per se. I'm not, not telling you his name. But <laughs> I know what he is devoted to because his life spelled it out easily for me. What are you devoted to? When people know you, when people, when people talk about you to others and they describe you, what do they say about you? Do they say, he's got the best beer can collection I've ever seen? Like, heaven forbid, I, I don't need any of you to have that, that to be your thing. But um, unless you're selling it on eBay and giving the proceeds to the church, that'd be fat. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but what things capture your attention? What do you do with your energy every day? <laughs> and, you know, it, it, when you ask these questions and you find yourself kind of thinking about all things... And maybe some of the things you're thinking about are not 
Jesus Christ. They're not even about your faith. It might be a good time to reset those priorities. And I'm not, I'm not giving shame here. I'm not throwing shade. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, right? It's to be a, a true student, though, you need to have a willingness, a willingness to acknowledge that your focus may have drifted, <laughs> drifted from faith to other things. It's okay. It's okay. You know, there's this really cool story in the New Testament all about the prodigal son. And it's about a young man who got a little off course. Okay, maybe he got a lot off course, but he went off course. And the best part of that story, my favorite part, is when he comes home. And the father's like, yes, that's my boy. Come on. He didn't say, I can't believe what you've done. You should have done this, and why are you here? None of that. In the scriptures, this story reads that he had his arms out, even that he ran to go and be with this son who hadn't done the best of things. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. He ran to go and see him. <laughs> This picture reminds me that our Heavenly Father is waiting for us. And he's waiting to run, 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 run. So this week I'm hoping that, that you and I will step out in faith. We'll step out in faith. We will refocus our attention, right, and maybe our affection to Jesus. Refocusing this week. And find some great biblical teaching along the way. I've talked to many people, you know, we just went through this 90-day, uh, which I didn't finish in 90 days, but about a little over 100 days. It's okay. I got through the Bible, and I, I spoke to quite a few people who have done this, and they said, I didn't know the Bible said so much about X, Y, and Z or fill in the blank. I had totally forgotten that there were chapters and chapters about this and about this and about this. It is all waiting for you in the Bible. It's all waiting for you to be read, to be understood, or to study it together. It's a lot of fun. It will strengthen and it will encourage your journey. It will strengthen and encourage your focus, right? It will strengthen and encourage you to be wholly devoted, devoted. So, because all we're after is nothing short than the fullness of Jesus Christ. Let's all stand up and, and let's just pray for devotion today. Maybe it's been a minute since you've been wholly devoted to Jesus Christ, but hey, that's what church is for. Here we are. We are ready to refocus. We are ready to reprioritize. Just pray with me. Father God, we are here. Lord, we're devoted. We're devoted. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, have made our way here into this building to hear about you. And Lord, we just ask that you would help us to be more devoted every day. Lord, we ask that you would help us to reprioritize and to focus our first love our first love, Lord, let it be you. Lord, help us to dust off that Bible this week, Lord. If we can write our name in the dust on the cover, Lord, then it has not been opened in a minute. Lord, we ask that you would help us to open the Bible today and every day, Father God, to look in there for truth. Lord, let us read through Proverbs. Lord, we want to be wise. It is right there. So much wisdom waiting for each and every one of us. Father God, be with us, Lord, love on us, Lord, as we need it. Encourage us, Father God, and help us to encourage each other. We love you, Lord, and we ask that you would be with us. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. amen. Thanks, everybody.